G'day guys, I wanted to do a quick video and tackle a common question a lot of people have about the lenses that they have. Whether it be Sigma, Nikon, Canon, uh, Tamron, anything like that, every lens has a bunch of information on the side. So, believe it or not, this information does all mean something to a lot of numbers, a lot of, uh, you know, photographic glossary terms, but it all does mean something and I personally believe that if you know what all this information means, you're going to quickly be able to choose the lens in whatever environment you're in. So if you're outside, you're going to know, you know, exactly what piece of glass you want to pick up to shoot with. And I think it's going to help a lot if you do understand the terms. So we'll start off, uh, I've got four lenses here. I've got two very cheap and two very expensive lenses. And I'll show you, I'll explain to you the differences between all of them. So this is a 50mm prime lens. Very cheap, 100 and, 120 bucks. Um, but I, I think it's actually I think it's actually quite good. A lot of people refer to this as a nifty fifty. Um, Nikon's version are uh, fifty mm one point eight f one eight and uh, fifty mm one four. So if you hear a lot of photographers talk in those terms, they always refer to the focal length and the aperture. That's common. That's common language between photographers when they're talking about their glass. So I'll read along the side of it. As you can see, it says Nikon AF. So Nikon being the brand, AF Nikkor 50mm 1,18D. Now it sounds like a mouthful, but break it down. All it's saying is it's Nikon is the brand, AF is autofocus, Nikkor means it's Nikkor's just Nikon's technical way of saying that they have lenses. You know, pretty stupid, but whatever. 50mm uh, is the focal length, 1,8D means that the maximum aperture for this lens is 1.8. So this is actually a very bright lens. 1.8 is the way that aperture works is 1.8 is a small number but believe it or not it's actually a very wide opening so it's kind of reverse. So getting back to the lens, 1.8 is this lens. The lenses will always refer um, with information on the glass to the maximum aperture and usually the wider the, the wider the aperture, the more expensive the lens is going to be. So this is this is a 50mm 1.8, and this is about $129. If I was to, if I was to go and get the 50mm 1.4, it doesn't sound like a big difference. The 1.4, about 450 bucks. So there's a big difference in between price, and especially when you get into into the pro glass. Um, yeah, as I said, AF autofocus Nikkor is their their term on calling the lenses. 50mm is a focal length. This is a fixed lens. It's not a zoom, so that's why it's just 50 millimeters. 1.8, and the D stands for, this was an earlier version of, of, uh, of the 50mm, so most D lenses have uh, an aperture ring that you, can, that you can control, so the other version of that is the G lenses, and they're a lot newer, so they're, they're, the, they're the more common lenses. Moving on to this, this is a very wide angle FX lens, this is, uh, so AFS, Nikkor, 14-24mm, 2.8G, ED, N, so this one has even more information on it. When you break it down, AF, is autofocus. The S stands for silent wave motor. Silent wave motor means it's uh, it's a very very quiet focusing system, so you can barely hear it. It's very fast and it's very accurate. 14 to 24 millimeters is the focal length, so this is zoom lens from 14 mil at, a, at the widest to 24 mil. Um, 28 means this maximum aperture of this lens is 28. A lot of pro glass 28 is a maximum aperture, so that lets in a lot of light. So if you're out and it's getting it's getting dark. Opening your aperture to two eight lets a lot of light in, so you can continue shooting. Especially if you've got, most of the cameras these days, the ISO capabilities are amazing. So two eight is a very bright aperture. When you get down to one four, as I was saying, you know, uh, even though this lens is a lot more, if this lens was a one four aperture, it would have cost a lot more. I mean, nothing like that actually exists. This lens was. Uh, close to two grand by itself. It's a very, it's, it's a very wide lens. But if this was a 1.4, it would have cost the actual mechanics and the actual technology behind it would have been even more to produce because 1.4 is allowing the allowing a lot more lighting. So it would have been harder to make, hence making it expensive. Um, ED stands for extra low dispersion, and nano as N stands for nano crystal coat. So ED and nano crystal coat are two new ones. ED is extra low dispersion, so basically that controls a lot of chromatic aberration. Uh, that's a coating that uh, you know Nikon use on a lot of their pro glass. And N for, uh, for the nano cone is to ensure things are basically as sharp as they can possibly get. So that was that was a 14 to 24 mil lens. 
This lens is 70-300, this is a cheap lens again, so probably if you were to buy this new on eBay, you could probably get it for 150-200 bucks. 70-300mm, um, it is, uh, I used it for a lot of, I use it for a lot of years, um, I don't use it anymore because I, I have invested in, into the more expensive glass, but it's fine throughout the day, but as soon as you start getting into low light shooting and then this is where this lens will fail and I'll explain why. So the information on this is AF Nikkor 70-300mm 4-56G. Now as I explained before AF autofocus Nikkor, Nikon's lens, 70-300mm that is the focal length. Now 4 to 56 now usually the on both the 50mm and the 14 and the 14 to 24 they have had fixed apertures, this one being 1.8 and this one being 2.8. Now this is saying 4 to 5.6, what does that mean? Okay, because this is a zoom lens and it's also a cheaper lens, it doesn't have a fixed aperture. 4 to 5.6 is what they call, is what they refer to as a floating aperture or a variable aperture. Now, what happens is when you're at 70 millimeters, the widest aperture you can get is f4. So that's, that's okay light, but it's not ideal. It gets even worse the further you zoom in. So you zoom in from 70 to 300, and you're going to get at 300 millimeters the widest aperture is going to be 5.6. Now that's a real problem because if you're if you are if you got if you got a set exposure on something and you zoom into if you move into 300 mil, it's going from f4 to 5.6. So that's a big difference. You're going to have a lot of lighting issues and the exposure is going to jump up and down. So that really sucks. That's why it's a cheap lens. You know, if you're first starting out, it doesn't matter. You're going to learn that a lot of the money you invest in your cameras is going to be in the glass because the glass is what you're going to keep further on down the track. So it's also a G lens, as I was saying. D lenses have uh, a controllable aperture ring just on the side here, but this this lens, this lens, and this lens being a G lens means it's newer so it doesn't have an aperture ring you control your aperture through the body this lens you actually control it on physically on the on the piece of glass so that is a lot of the reasons why cheaper lenses uh, you know it, that's why they're cheap because you are going to struggle in low light and being it's not an AFS it's not a, it doesn't have a silent wave motor the focusing is slower compared to both uh, the 14 and the 24 mm lens so that's why it's a lot cheaper. I don't like to diss them completely because I used it for I used it for a long time and it did give me great results. But after using the expensive glass, I would never revert back to it because I know I would struggle if I was going to shoot like I would the expensive glass. Moving on to the next lens, uh, it's a 24 to 70 70 mil 28. That's how a lot of people will refer to it. Um, my favorite lens at the moment, um, probably the best portrait lens I have. Um, okay, so the digits on this. Uh, AFS Nikkor 24 to 70 mm 2.8G EDN. So by now you can pretty much put that all together. AFS autofocus with a silent wave motor inbuilt. Nikkor uh, Nikon lens 24 to 70 millimeters of focal length. 2.8G maximum aperture of this lens is 2.8. So 2.8 is a very very good aperture to be shooting at because it does let a lot of light in. And having a wide aperture like that is also great for portraiture because shooting at that f-stop you're able to if you were to shoot a girl out in the bright daylight you were easily able to set her as central focus and blur out the background what that's called is having a very shallow depth of field so that's how a lot of pro photographers are able to get their images looking perfect because they can centralize the image on where they want to be so you've got the you've got the girl you've got the background that's been blown out of focus and everything looks perfect so that's why it's worth investing in in um, the expensive glass because it it also is a better quality build. You sp you spend three hundred dollars on the lens and you spend two grand on the lens. You can physically feel the difference before you even move into using the lens on a camera. So yeah, uh, AFS Nikkor twenty four to seventy mil. This is zoom lens from twenty four to seventy mil. Seventy mil is a perfect portrait lens. Twenty four is a perfect running around kind of documentary size uh, focal length. 2.8G, um, the aperture is controlled from in the body, so this 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 um, footage is being recorded on the Nikon D3S, and this lens, if I was to run on the Nikon D3S, I would be able to control my aperture perfectly just from the front dial on the body. I wouldn't be using it as a manual aperture on the actual lens. Um, 
ED, extra low dispersion for chromatic aberration, which is, I don't want to go into that because that's a pain in the ass to explain. Um, I will go on, I'll do a further video on, on, on chromatic aberration and nano crystal coat for very sharp images. So those are the three lenses, uh, sorry, the four lenses. And as you can see, that's what all the information means. So I hope this video has helped and I'll hopefully be doing a lot more in the future because I really want to get into tutorials and stuff. So thanks for watching. Give me some feedback if you want. Cheers guys.